I start my day around quarter past five. That's when my alarm goes off. It takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to get into work. That gives me some time to sit in my car on the way, really thinking about what my day is going to entail and any sort of tasks that are going to arise and how I might deal with them. Usually when I'm setting off to work or I'm on the way to work, I'll be thinking about them things and how I can best manage it. Sometimes some prisoners could become quite irate and argumentative and I sometimes have to think about how I'm going to deal with them conversations and get the best possible outcome. So some, some days I'm quite anxious when I know that there's something coming up that might resort to some sort of violence between prisoners or assaults on each other. A lot of times I'm quite looking forward to coming to work, quite excited. I know if there's going to be a good day, I've got some good staff on, it's a good team. And everybody works hard on Alpha Wing, so I like to be a part of that team and I like to know that we've done some good work. Sometimes I work 12 hour shifts. On this particular day, I'm working an early shift. Most prisons work with a change in shift pattern of around 39 hours a week and the length of shifts may vary. I arrive at work usually around quarter past seven. The shift officially starts at half past seven. It's quite a long process to get through security with all the checks that you've got to do. When you're in a rush and you're busy and you know you've got so many things that you need to sort, sometimes you feel like it's a bit of a hindrance, but actually it gives me confidence that everybody that's coming into the establishment is safe and there's nothing hopefully being conveyed in that is going to cause any harm. Walking through the prison onto the wing, it's, yeah, it is eerie. It is a big old place. It's often silent at that time. You hear a lot of the gates clanging. If there's anybody shouting or any noises, they're very prominent and you can hear them clearly. So it can be quite daunting to people, but you become accustomed to it. You become used to it and climatized and it just becomes the norm for you. So when I first come in, I go up to my office, I check any emails or any updates from the night before, if there's been any incidents, and I go to the staff room, which is where we hold our morning briefing. So everybody in that room in the morning is part of A Wing. There might be a few other people that get redeployed onto our wing from other areas, and that's what's imperative about the morning meeting. It's because all the information that's passed on is relevant to that wing. The book that I've got in my hand there is the observation book. And that is where yeah. any incident or any information is recorded. Yeah, he knows he knows what he does, but I think his frustrations lie with the fact that so that anybody visiting the wing can read it and be kept in the loop of what's going on. So I got promoted after 18 months. I didn't expect to be successful. I um, was hoping just to get an interview and just to get experience of that. So I've been in this role now for 10 months on Alpha Wing and it just keeps getting better really because every day there's a new situation that I've not dealt with so I know that I'm developing myself and that's what I need from a job. I need to feel like I'm getting better. I do enjoy giving the briefs because I feel like it sets the day. It gives me a chance to set my expectations and what I want delivered each day. To be fair, the briefings are probably one of my favourite things about the job because it just gives us time to all come together and discuss any concerns or it gives us time to sort of have like a supervision time where if somebody does have a particular incident or situation they want to discuss, other people can offer advice and guidance with that. And then any tasks and jobs are detailed out to individuals of what role they're going to play in the day really, whether that be a moves officer or a cleaning officer or sorting out the applications from prisoners moving prisoners around the wing, around the prison, to workshops, to education. Whatever, do not repeat on London. That's it. That's it from me. Have a good day. Yeah, we're about everywhere, but I'll be on. Um, so we're doing, sending Sea Wing off to work and we're sending Jim off, depending on which one's gone. Um, I'll just pass you that, miss. Thank you. Any prison that's going anywhere within the prison will need searching. They come down and they are given a rub down search and a wand in, which is, will pick up anything that's electrical or magnetic that they shouldn't have in their possession. And this is done for safety, for them, for us. When you've done this, just stay on there so I can give you a rub down before you get off, all right? Having a cafe function, it's, it's imperative because we want to make sure everyone remains safe. And, and the prisoners are used to it, so they're very, you know, happy to be involved and compliant, and it's just part of the day-to-day -day running of the prison, really. Thank you. 
Yeah. Doing a normal a rub down search on the wing when you suspect somebody's got something. I found quite a few things, whether that be a Stanley knife recently in someone's pocket. It was. It hadn't been used, but there was suspicion it was going to be used, which is a good find, and it and it makes you feel confident again in your own abilities that you have seen or had a suspicion, and actually your suspicion was right. You've acted upon it in the right way, and that's then out of the system really, and not going to be used to harm somebody. As a supervising officer, you supervise the shop move, which is when all the prisoners are going from their residential area to the area they're working. So whether that be the kitchens, the bakery, education, the laundry. The prison officers, they will supervise the prisoners on the route up to their workshop or their area of work or education, just to make sure that everyone arrives safely and everybody gets to the area they need to be really and there's no one that's gone off in a direction they shouldn't have done. Prisoners have arrived in the bakery. They have an outside contract making bread for an outside agency and that's sent out, but they also make some desserts, pastries for the prisoners inside with their meal times. I quite like the fact that it's not brought in from outside and it's something that is made within HMP Manchester and it's provided to the prisoners. The lads seem to really enjoy it. There's a lot of perks of being in the bakery and it's time off the wing for them as well, something to focus on. They're learning new skills, they're getting used to working because some of the prisoners that come to prison have never worked and never had a full-time job. It gives them some consistency in the life, a routine. They get to deal with people around them like you would in a normal workplace. So I think they learn skills such as teamwork and a bit of independence, a bit of initiative. And you know, if anything needs completing, they learn how to do it there and can work under their own guidance. Every day on Alpha Wing, there's a period in which the prisoners come out of their cells and they can associate with each other. No, you want to miss this us, we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, I paid him to say that. <laughs> they can get any cleaning done, any laundry done that they need to do. And part of my role, and I guess as a prison officer, is to engage with the prisoners on the wing and just build that rapport and build relationships. And especially as a supervising officer, you're sort of the point of call for any issues that may need escalating. So some of the prisoners on here will be new to prison, potentially for the first ever time, potentially as a return, which both come with quite a lot of stress because if it is your first time in prison, it's a daunting experience, it's intimidating. Anxiety levels are probably high. They're not sure of the processes or procedures. The prisoner in question is asking about employment, so he's telling me that he's got skills and qualifications which he would like to use within prison. And it's a positive thing, it shows that they're wanting to improve and they're wanting to be rehabilitated. This prisoner has been on Alpha Wing for as long as I have been on Alpha Wing, which is coming up to three years now. I've got a really, really good relationship with him and, in my opinion, he's just ready to be released because he's been in prison for so many years I think he's close to 40, he's been in since probably 19 years old. He goes above and beyond every single day, anything that I want him to do. And, you know, it's, it's hard work to get to a stage where you do feel that you can trust prisoners and that there is confidence and they can trust you. They do sometimes see you as somebody just in a white shirt or a position of authority. And it's hard to build that relationship, but it's key to making sure your area of work runs smoothly and every day runs smoothly and people remain safe and that rehabilitation is possible. The worst case scenario is people returning to prison and that's ultimately every day is what we're trying to avoid. When people leave, I say, I hope I never see you again. Hello. Hi, Are you all right? Yeah, you. All right, yeah. A lot of prison officers that come into the job now and start on an apprenticeship and they will have mentors or experienced officers guiding them for their first 12 months of probation as a prison officer. So this is my ex-mentor coming to speak to me to ask if I will speak on the graduate scheme. I forgot, and then this morning I was like, I need to make sure he knows I'm going, so I just thought a thumbs up. Right, I've not seen it yet, but I'll be there. Yeah, I've yeah. half seven to half eight. Half seven to half eight. Yeah. No pressure, just chilled. Yeah. I, I'm They'll come it. with the goods, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, I'm it's looking just... forward to it because I haven't actually sat down and met them properly. Like, any and the race as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm like, looking forward to it. Proper race. So, so they meet every two weeks for a group supervision and every week for individual one-to-ones. I think it's really important to have that support and have that time 
to be supervised um, and bring up any concerns that you might not want to bring up with your team. You might want somebody who's completely impartial who doesn't know the prisoner or doesn't know the staff member that you might be talking about. Lunch is around 11.30 to 12 o'clock. The prisoners serve the meals. It comes over from the kitchen. The food is made by prisoners. It comes over to the wing and it's served by the prisoners behind the servery. Lads, grab your food if you've not got it, please. Make your way down, grab your food. They return to the cells for a period of about an hour or two over lunch so that staff can get their lunch. And then again in the afternoon, another domestic period is run or gym or work or education. HMP Manchester is a very, very large prison with around 750 prisoners now. It's very loud, it's noisy, it's busy, it's active. There's a lot of things that are going on that need dealing with every day. It can be quite daunting. Sometimes you get a feeling when you, when you think something's going to happen and nine times out of ten it's right. It's like a sense that you develop. You notice, I guess, something out of the ordinary, a prisoner behaving a certain way, and that comes with time. It comes with being in the job and being involved in incidents. What was that pie? Oh, oh, yeah, the rich, rich, rich. Working in a prison often has its downsides and one of them would be when a serious incident has occurred. As a prison officer, you are expected to respond to these and you'll first be alerted to that by the sound of a general alarm. And that can be anything from a fight between two prisoners, it could be a staff assault, it could be a self-harm incident where, where you need to make sure you can get staff there to the scene to help you with that. It can be quite daunting when you hear the alarm going off and you do worry about your colleagues, about yourself as well, but you need to switch on quickly and you need to work out what you need to do. You'll do your control and restraint training, which provides you with techniques and skills to actively manage a situation where you might have to restrain a prisoner. A lot of the times the prisoners are compliant. See you later, take care. And even if they're fighting with each other, when staff arrive, they will stop fighting and they won't harm you. But often you can get caught in the melee of an incident and be injured. When you're managing an incident, it's important to not rush in there straight away. You need to take in the entire situation, an overall view of what's going on, and don't get tunnel vision. Often prisoners might play a fight, trying to make it look like there's a fight to hide or mask something else going on where somebody else has been assaulted, let's say, or an incident's going on. Sorry. You feel a bit guilty sometimes because you've missed it or you wish you could have responded a bit sooner. That guilt can last a couple of days or weeks, really, because I don't like the thought of anyone being harmed. And it's all about learning. It's all about learning from any experience that you've got that you can take forward and deal with things better next time. You need to realise you're not going to stop every incident that happens. You can't be there for everything, but all you can do is respond the best you possibly can. <laughs> After the prisoners have been served their meals, they are placed within the cells. We then have a last minute brief of how the day's gone and any tasks that need to be completed the day after. We count to make sure we've got the right amount of prisoners on our wing and they've all returned from their area of work or employment or education. I sort of finish off last few emails, tidy up the office for anything that's left over, leave a note for somebody who's on the next day or for myself of tasks that need completing tomorrow. And then we walk to the gate. I think if you were thinking about becoming a prison officer, you would need to be a people person, definitely. You would need to be willing and eager to help everybody that you come across. And I think it's also important not to be judgmental. Some people have had the worst upbringings you can imagine, or the worst start to life. Not that it makes an excuse of why they've committed crime or they've ended up in prison. You can help somebody rehabilitate just by standing and listening to them talk about certain things that have happened in their previous life. I was born on a council estate. I left school with GCSE Ds um, in maths and English. I had to go back to college to do them again before I could apply for university. I had a good upbringing. But I didn't have the, you know, the best start, let's say, to life, which a lot of these men in prison probably can relate to. And yes, their path's gone very different to mine, but what I like to tell them is that you need to use some things in your past life or things that I guess weren't your, the best start in life to fuel you instead of holding you back. And all the skills that you learn from working within a prison are easily transferable into any job 
you ever want to go into, I definitely believe that working as a prison officer stands you in good stead for any job that you might ever find yourself in or come across or want to apply for.